Hello everybody, this is GamerGar, welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video, I have got some really cool tips for you to enjoy. But before we get into the tips, hit that subscribe button if you like. That means when more content is released, you'll be notified. So, let's jump into tip number one. Did you know that any forgeables you plant on the ground are absolutely invincible to crows? That's right, crows will never attack your lovely forgeables. So if you have rare crows or scare crows, Save them for the crops that need them, the forest bills are good. Next tip for you, did you know that fish ponds can give you an unlimited supply of trash if there's no fish inside them? This is by far the best place to get trash in the game. So if you have a fish pond and it's empty, by all means abuse it, get some lovely trash. There are some amazing trash items that you can recycle. For things like cloth, 658 gold with the artisan profession of course. Just what early players need for good money. Next tip, we have the hopper, 10 key gems only, and you can add this processing machine to your fabulous farm. However, if you don't like hoppers or don't have much of a need for them, you can always just throw it into a deconstructor. And what you're going to get back here are fabulous radioactive bars. There are tons of things you can do in this game with radioactive bars, for example, make recipes, but you can also sell them. Combine them with the blacksmith perk and you can get 4500 gold for a radioactive bar, which is insane huge money for you in the mid to late game. Next up we have of course the salmon season. So every spring you're going to get the salmon berry season. This means you can get 3 salmon berries per bush if you have a max of foraging skill. However, as we can see I just got 4 salmon berries right there because I took a foraging buff food. I increased my foraging skill past 10. I now have a foraging skill of 12. 4 salmon berries per bush is insanely good. Not only that, but you can combine this with your botanist perk from the foraging profession tree. That means every salmonberry you collect will be of iridium quality. Not only will they stack very nicely for you, but you can eat or sell these for decent money or decent health and energy. If you don't get a whole lot of salmonberry bushes on the first day, simply restart your game to increase the number of bushes that will have salmonberries for you. This works all year round, which is absolutely magnificent. So it doesn't matter if you're in year 1 or year 2. Next up we have the overpowered wheat seeds. These seeds are one of the most broken seeds in the game. And I'm going to show you now why they are so broken. Let's purchase a few hundred off here, here and plant them on the farm. As we can see I don't have a huge farm. It's just a small little one. However if you have a bigger farm passion this then good for you. Fill it up to the top with as much wheat as possible. I've got some iridium sprinklers laid down, with pressure nozzles of course, so that I can use up more tiles. They only take 4 days to grow, plant them on the 25th, which means you can harvest them on the 1st of fall. Not only will this get you tons of hay and wheat back of course if you have a silo, but you also will not need to hold the ground. But this is just the start of it, put your wheat into a keg and you can get back beer. Not only is bear a lovable gift by a few NPCs around the valley, you can also sell bear to make a huge profit. So, a wheat seed costs 10 gold, one regular wheat is 27 gold, and a bear is 280 gold. It is absolutely broken and it is a huge money maker in this game, so capitalize on wheat, don't get beat. <laughs> Next up we have the art of giant crops. So, what is the best way to get a giant crop in this game? Let's look at the cauliflower seeds, they take 12 days to grow. Use the agriculturist pork, crops grow 10% faster. This means that your cauliflowers won't take 12 days, they'll take less. But let's go further, combine it with a deluxe speed grow for 25% or a hyper speed grow for 33%. This combines with agriculturist, so a cauliflowers take 7 days with agriculturist and deluxe speed grow, however they take 6 days with agriculturist and hyper speed grow. This means if you plant your cauliflowers on the first, they'll be fully grown by the seventh. You will have the whole month to transform them into giant crops. Utilize rain totems every day so you're not using up valuable space with sprinklers of course. So this is day number seven and as you can see we have a few giant crops, not a whole lot though considering the amount of cauliflowers we did actually plant. So basically every single tree by tree cauliflower tile has a 1% chance to merge into a giant crop every single day. So the best way to get giant crops is to plant your cauliflowers as early as possible 
grow them up as quickly as possible and just sleep through the days until these crops start merging up. Now there are mods you can get that can predict where these merges will happen, but if you're impatient like myself, just fill up the farm with crops. This is day number 28, look how many transformations we got, huge amounts. And not only are the giant crops cool, but the giant crops will also give you a lot more than nine crops. A giant crop can yield between anywhere from 15 to 21 regular crops. So you're going to make at least almost double the crops back by utilizing this method. Not only that, but these giant crops will stand the test of time. Seasons will not affect these crops. Crows cannot penetrate them. They are invincible. The only way to get these crops off your farm is to hit them with an axe. Also, if you have the shaving enchant, you can get more crops per giant crop. And you can get the enchants, of course, when you're on Ginger Island, when you get to the forge. So you can even capitalize on this more. So, if you're playing Stardew Valley for a long time and you haven't come across a giant crop, reason being is that there's only a 1% chance it can happen every day on a 3x3 tile. Some videos will show you examples of putting 3x3 tiles and then a space between each one. Don't do that, just stack them all up. Next up, let's talk about super cool ring combinations. Here is another cool ring combination for you. The glowstone ring is a combination of the glow ring and the magnet ring. But you can combine it further with any other ring in the game. So if we combine it with the Iridium Band, which also has a glow ring and a magnet ring inside it, you're going to end up with this huge light radius that will basically bring up the sun wherever you go. We don't have any rings equipped at the moment in this dark cave. Let's equip one ring combination. Look how much light we get right there, that is absolutely huge. Let's equip two of these combinations, and as we can see, this dark cave isn't a dark cave anymore. It just looks like any other regular cave level that should go down. But let's take this a little bit further. Let's bring this combination into town in the dead of night and see just how bright it actually is. As we can see, you can get a much better look at it here. The light radius around us is huge. This makes it super easy for traveling around in the dark, especially if you're looking for forage bills or items in particular. Next up, I'm going to show you a really cool combat build that a lot of people don't use. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the Statue of Uncertainty, change on professions. Let's start with Scout. Critical Strike Trance increased by 50%. I have a choice here between Acrobat, which means I can do my special attacks more, or Desperado. Critical strikes are deadlier. Let's go with Desperado. Next up, we are going to get an Aquamarine Ring and an Iridium Band. Barge them together. Aquamarine Ring gives me a 10% increased critical strike chance. And the Iridium Band, of course, gives me 10% extra attack power. Along with some other minor buffs, such as the Glow and the Magnet Rings. We do that twice, and we're going to get an Iridium Needle. This thing has plus 200 crit power. If this thing crits combined with the Desperado perk, enemies will just disintegrate before you. Let's increase its critical strike chance by giving it 3 Oc Marines. This is going to give it a huge critical strike chance, it's plus 11 at the moment. Putting the last one in puts it up to plus 14 which is massive. But why start there? Let's give it an enchant. Now it took 3 attempts but it was worth it. We're looking for the artful enchant which means its special move is cut down by 50% on the cooldown so we can use it a lot more so let's fight some enemies and look how much this thing crits you are almost guaranteed to crit something every time you attack an enemy with it it is insanely good look at the damage numbers 868 damage on that slime right there it didn't stand a chance we did over 1000 damage right there 824 damage to that magma sprite he's seen his last day look at this doggy here on the ground one shot it Look at this upgraded version, that is a magma sparker, one shot it. This build will one shot any enemy in the game as long as it crits. Now you're not guaranteed a crit each time, but your crit chance is huge. So I'm going to leave the video there, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're all having a great Christmas, my Christmas is going great so far. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button, and let's grow the channel together. Let's aim for 5,000 subscribers. For the end of the year what an achievement it would be we also have a 100 day video coming up for you it should be ready to go next week and it is going to be a whopper of a video check out these videos up here if you want to binge watch more stardew valley content i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next one